Hey, it's Joe Farrell with Geek Toolkit, and today we're reviewing a Lindsay 1080p 30 frame per second camera. I'm actually going to film the entire review on the camera. We'll go through the foot, the basically the features of the camera, and then later on I'll show you footage to show you what this camera can do outside of what I'm showing you here. I'll do things like overcast day and inside, and I'll show you the photograph mode and all that. Once we talk about the features and show you that stuff, then I'll talk about positive and negatives and who this camera is for. The first thing I like to do when I talk about my reviews is start out and say why I picked this product. I get presented by a lot of people asking me to review their products. I'm very picky about what I choose. I like to pick things that are useful to my users or that I was really interested in and I really wanted to know. Like, is this thing for, like, is this legit? I had considered this camcorder earlier. There's, you now you'll see there's a lot of camcorders on Amazon in this price range. But it was nice to have one presented that I could test out and tell you, my users, if it's any good. The reason I had thought about using it was because I was finding, using my cell phone for filming YouTube videos, I had two main issues. One is getting footage off of my iPhone was a pain. Super slow, super inefficient way of getting stuff off. If I tried using the cable, it would drop frames. I can't pull an SD card out, of course. And um, also what would happen is I'd film a couple shots in a day, then I would go use my phone as a camera for you know the rest of the week. And then when I got back to my footage and filming, I would find myself digging through hundreds of photos to figure out where my footage was. And that was just really inconvenient. If you have a dedicated camera and you're doing something like you know YouTube videos or you're doing something like uh, vacation photos and such, then a dedicated camera can be really cool. You're not taking up your battery life. You're getting your footage nice and you know just perfect so that you can pull it off the SD card and then just edit it. And that's what drew me to this camera. I was like, man, that would be really cool to film on. So I'm gonna film this, I'm gonna do some experiments and talk about it. But before we get into this camera a bit deeper, let's talk about what it actually is. I have said it's a 1080p 30 frame per second camera, but it also has a 720p mode that does 120 frames per second. And it can do eight times slow-mo on top of that. It ends up filming at about 15 frames per second on that 720p. I'll show you some video footage of that, but it's a really cool feature of this camera. Some other stuff is it comes with two batteries. It comes with a carrying strap, has a, uh, a shoe on top of it. Now it's not a hot shoe, it's not powered. And so if you're gonna do a light or anything, you're gonna have to supply power to that light. It does have a microphone input on the back. Again, that is not powered. So if you hook a microphone up to it, which is great, that means you can get better audio, but you're gonna to have to power it, and that's something to be aware of. The microphone that you're, or basically my voice that you're hearing right now is off of the built-in microphone. I'm using this camera exclusively for this uh, review, so you, everything you're seeing, if you're wondering about the quality, is what it looks like indoors. I'll show you some outdoor shots in a minute. It has a 24 megapixel camera, so not only can it take video, but it can take ca camera shots of 24 megapixel. I'll show those. It also can work as a, a webcam. Now, I don't have footage of the webcam, but I was told it was a bit grainy. I think when you see the camera footage, you'll see kind of what I'm talking about there, though, because that grain actually persisted in several uh, other spots for this camera. Now, this camera lists for $90, but it was on sale for $58 at the time of review. It seems to hover at about $58 to $60 in general, and I'll put some additional info in the description of the video to talk about ways to get an even better price now, what do you need to use it? Well, I always recommend with any camera, it doesn't matter the quality, getting an external microphone. I know I'm filming this video on this mic because I just want to get you that quality, but ideally you'd have an external, and it has to be powered microphone. I'd probably recommend something like a Rode video mic, which actually costs about as much as this camera, but audio is so, so important. And you'll notice a lot of my videos, I do a lot of work on my audio to make them as good as possible. This camera does take an SD card up to 128 gigs. It's a full-size SD card. You want to get an SD card for this camera so you have something to record onto. It comes with two batteries, which is super handy. A carrying case. Uh, it comes with a carrying strap, a handle, and it also has a nice little handy remote. Okay, so before we jump into my pluses and things I love about this camera, let's take a look at some of the video footage. The first thing I want to show is some of the still images. Now these are a bit grainy. I did a selfie image here. I also did one of my arcade, uh, one of my arcade setups, just to kind of show you what it looks like. Now this was over very good lighting LED panels in the ceiling. This gives you an idea of what that's going to look like. I'm going to do it full screen. That way you can see the full quality. 
The other thing I want to show you is indoor uh, video footage that I filmed of that arcade, kind of give you some fun stuff to look at and kind of get an idea of what happens with motion. Now the number one thing you're going to notice about this right off the bat is it's very shaky. A lot of camera software, especially in phones and so on, has automatic image stabilization or AIS. This camcorder does not have that. I think it might be fine on a tripod. But really, unless you do some kind of post-processing, it's going to be a bit shaky if you're doing hand cam work with it. Something to be aware of, it's something that's actually very common in any camcorder that's a bit older that doesn't have AIS. Now here's some footage of outside and just basically testing the zoom. It does have a 16x digital zoom. Now that 16 times zoom being digital, it's going to get a bit pixelated. You're going to see me basically zoom in on some birds and film some water shots here. I'm trying to get you something really pretty. This was a nice, bright, a slightly overcast day, but really most cameras, this is the best I would see those cameras doing. And so there you go, that's an outdoor shot for you and what footage can look like outside. One last demo I wanna show you is just kind of, I'm gonna go through a quick video of a 110 camera, which is an older camera, but just to show you, if you're gonna think about using this as like a, on a tripod as a, demonstration camera. Let me show you what that clip looks like real quick. One more item I want to talk about. This is a uh, one, of my, oh, this one of my favorite cameras. It was almost like a spy camera. So you had this little flip out viewfinder here and then you just had this button here for taking the picture and then this wound the film. And so if, if you haven't, based on how old you are, you may not remember winding film. This is what was called a 110 film. Now this particular one was cool because it was a fake canister. 110 film looked like this it typically had on the back the uh, number of pictures. But if you look at this one, let's see if we can show you. Yeah, see, I can't, I can't get that to focus. That's so weird. He zoomed out, so I was already zoomed in a little bit. This gives you an idea of the clarity and the view. This is a view of my uh, Dynatap system. I'm going to be revisiting this soon. We're going to put ESP Home on it. Uh, but basically, this is an NFC reader, so you can do home automation by just tapping things to it. This is what the battery looks like for the camera. And I will see if I can... Yeah, it just kind of... It's kind of... It's almost like it's nearsighted. Or farsighted, I guess it would be. Okay, now let's go through the pluses of this camera. The number one plus, the screen flipping around is incredibly, incredibly useful. I can frame myself, I can see where I'm at, something I can't do with my phone easily. The price is killer. Being able to get this thing pretty much all day long for about $70 or less is great. I mean, there's a lot of my footage, I think my, my lighting costs more than $70. The ability to pause and continue is amazing. I'm going to show you how that works. I'm going to hit OK real quick to pause it. And now I'm back filming. But while I was paused, I was able to look down at my notes and figure out what the next bullet point is. And so that pausing is great if you're doing video footage. You can have your notes here, basically what your episode is about or and your vlog or whatever you're trying to present. And then just being able to, to, you know, if you have your finger on that button, you can just pause it. And then you can just go into your next thing. Now for me, the next thing is external microphone support. Camcorders, especially low price ones, are going to have to basically figure out a way to... Low price camcorders are going to, of course, going to have compromises. And a lot of the compromises are going to be on things like audio quality. Being able to plug in a powered external mic is super cool. Because then you can have great audio quality and you don't have to depend on the camera for it. Of course, you can also have a separate audio recording solution but I do think it's cool that you can plug a different mic into here. 
One of the things I want to talk about is how easy it is to transfer data off of this camera. You plug a micro USB cable in, nothing proprietary, just like a phone charging cable. Plug it into your computer and you can just transfer files like it's a hard drive. It's super fast, works really, really well, and that was super convenient. Now, the other thing is when you plug that in, you get an option to switch it over to a digital camera. And if you do that, then this becomes a webcam. Now, again, it's not a great webcam. It's a bit grainy, but it will work as a webcam. While that's happening, that micro USB cable also charges the camera. It is a little bit of a downer in that you can't charge the battery outside of the camcorder. There's no charger for the battery. It goes in the camcorder and you charge it through the camcorder. It has a couple of neat modes like time lapse or filming in the dark. I thought those were really, really cool. You know, you can have pitch blackness. You turn on the IR light and you can see with this camera and film. I thought that was just really fancy. I'd never seen that before in a camcorder. Um, neat feature to have. HDMI output. That's really cool because it gives you full HDMI access to the camera if you want to plug it into a TV. Then you can use a remote to play it back. I thought that's cool if you're, you know, you're doing family photos or video and you want to show it at a friend's house you're able to get that right up on the screen. That's, that's just nice. Pro tip, if you do do that, make sure you turn off the auto off setting on it because the camera will turn off if it's not charging um, while you're watching it on the screen. So just set that to off, that way it just doesn't power save on you. I found it very, very easy to use. Um, the, the remote's very simple. The camera UI is very simple. There's not a lot of buttons on it. There wasn't anything very technical with it. It was just very easy out of the box to get going. The one thing I will say though is buy a quality SD card and format it on a computer before you put it in the camcorder. I didn't find the formatting inside the camcorder to be super reliable. And one of the things that was noted when I opened it up right off the bat in the box was basically format your SD card. So that is one thing I would say is format your SD card, then put it in the camera, you should be fine. Okay, so let's go with the negatives. What, you know, this thing sounds great. It's a great price. What are the negatives? The biggest negative I see with this camera is the close-up footage. It, it's basically farsighted. If you get too close, it gets blurry. So here's some text. I want you what happens when it gets close. See, it, it, it just starts to get a bit blurry when it gets close. Now, this text is a bit bigger. I, when I show you the overhead view, you'll see it there as well. And also, in my arcade view, there's a couple areas where I zoom in and you see it blur out. I don't know why that is. I don't know if that is a lighting thing or what. Webcam quality is grainy. Not a big deal, but it is something that, you know, it is something to know. They advertise it as working as a webcam, but it's not the greatest webcam. Powered external mics only is a bit of a bummer because I live and die by the Panda mic. Uh, which is a very inexpensive, high-quality mic. I love it. A lot of my footage has used it. If you want to see a sample of that, the um, 10 things that I learned about, wish I knew about 3D printing, that was all on a Panda mic that was starting off uh, on one. But, you know, I, you really want good audio, and a powered mic is another battery and another complexity uh, to handle. I want to talk about video quality. Now, this thing has a 1080p camera. Not all 1080p cameras are made the same. If you were to look at a 1080p video and say, okay, that's what this camera does, that's not exactly true. There's a number of things that go into getting that image. The lens or the, what's called the glass that's on the camera, the aperture, the, the sensor that's detecting it, all that matters. Now, I do want to say this isn't a bad camera, I don't, I don't believe, but it's not the best. It's not going to be a super sharp 1080p image. And I say that because if I find a camera that's $100 that does super sharp 1080p, I'm going to call that out as a bonus. But here, I'm going to just say it's mediocre. It's not bad, but it's also not super sharp. So I put it in the negative category. The zoom is digital. Uh, that's a bit disappointing because a optical zoom, you can actually zoom in and keep quality. When you go to a digital zoom, it's going to pixelate out pretty quick. And you'll see that when I zoom in on the birds, you can really see that pixelation kick in. So I just wanted to point that out. The zooming is digital and it's gonna fuzz out really quick. So yeah, it's cool it has a 16x zoom, but I don't know if it's super usable. Finally, the last thing I wanna talk about is the image stabilization is a bit of a bummer. I'm gonna to have to do some investigation to see if there's some good software to stabilize afterwards. But really, I feel like in today's day and age where everyone's used to very stable video, 
the footage on this is going to look very amateurish if you're doing handheld camera work. You're really going to want to have something to help steady it if you're filming just freehand. I was standing there filming birds and such, and I was standing still holding it up, and I was still having camera shake. And if you zoom, it just gets more, um, more, it gets worse. So I highly recommend using this with a monopod or something to help assist you, maybe even a mini tripod for filming. Okay, so the final part of this review, who is this for? Who should buy this? YouTubers on a budget should absolutely consider this camera. The front-facing video portion of this is very powerful because it allows you to frame. There are so many videos I filmed where I had to film the whole video over again because when I went back and watched it, I realized that I was out of frame. You know, I was like down here or something or the camera was off or whatever. Being able to just look at the frame and see that I'm, I'm where I want to be, super good. Being able to get an idea of how the lighting is affecting me, also super good. So that, for YouTubers, great camera. You can always upgrade your audio or film your audio separately later. I'd, I'd highly recommend that. But YouTubers, absolutely. Any kind of vacationers or events, this is a great camera for you. Here's why. If you're on a vacation and you film everything on a camera like this, then you're going to have everything consistent. You'll have it all on that memory card. You can pull it, dump it, and do something with it. It's a lot handier, I think, than, um, you know, you, you can use your phone camera for personal stuff. I typically find if I'm filming an event and then I'm doing it with my phone, I have, like, photos in the middle of, like, business cards or something weird in there. And that's really not, then I'm doing this work of pulling stuff off. If you want to dump stuff quickly and efficiently, a camera like this is great for that. A B camera, so a B camera is the second camera that you can have to basically give yourself the ability to switch um, angles. I'm going to use this for a B camera in the future and see how it does, but I think it will be great for that. It's inexpensive, it will give you that angle, typically you don't need super high quality from every angle, so that works great. A travel camera to conserve battery life or just take long video footage that you want to get pull off very easily, this would be great for that. If I'm just going to go to you know Seattle and go film the Space Needle, this would be a great camera to take with me and be able to capture that footage. A kid camera. Think about you know if you have a kid that's at an age where they want to make movies or something and you don't want to invest too heavily, this would be a great camera for them. It's inexpensive. It does probably everything they'd want to do. They can pull the footage off to edit it on a computer. I think this will be great for uh, kids, basically like their first camera or something like that. A camera that's easy to use. If you're not very technical and you're looking to use a video camera, this camera, pretty easy to get going. And once you get through a couple of quirks, it's very, very easy to use. So journaling would be the last thing I think about. This, anything where you're doing like a time lapse or you're going to like video uh, a project or whatever, you can put it all on this camera and then pull the footage off very easily. It's all off of one camera inexpensive way to go. So those are what I came up with for uses for this camera. I'm going to try it as a B camera for a couple of my next videos, see how that goes. I'll see how it affects my editing flow and so on. And I'll probably do a bit more like a follow-up if people want to know more about it. Okay, so what's the bottom line on this camera? Well, there's a couple things. Number one, you're going to want to use an external mic. The microphone that's built into it is okay, but really if you're doing any kind of videoing from what I've seen and from what I've experienced, I really like great audio quality. So you're gonna to wanna to use a better mic than what it comes with, but that's okay, it does support the external mic. The other thing is I'm filming right now with a window open next to me, so I'm getting natural light. If you wanna be a YouTuber, a TikToker, or somebody on a budget that's doing stuff, you wanna do what's called talking head videos, which is what you're seeing now, then you can open up a window, use this camera, and I think it's uh, you know an acceptable video quality. It's very easy and quick, and sometimes your workflow is worth more than anything. And what I mean by workflow is being able to produce videos very quickly and get content off the camera onto the computer and edit it. And everything about this workflow with this camera has been very easy to do. Um, if you're looking for something to do a overhead camera view, this camera is just, it's not great because of that blur. Uh, when you hold things close to it and the zoom being digital, I probably recommend something that had more of an optical zoom on it. Maybe go spend a little bit more money, but I do think it's valuable to have a second camera for those overhead views because that's such a time waste to actually set up. I should say a time suck. When you set that up and you're dialing in your overhead views and so on for the like to-do videos that I showed earlier, um, 
those are hard to set up and I was hoping this camera would be my camera for that but I really don't think it's going to do that I think it, it's not quite there so talking head videos natural lighting very inexpensive way to get going on YouTube TikTok any social media any to do platform or anything even if you want to just talk to family and you want to record videos uh, great camera for that I really appreciate you watching this video I know it's a bit longer I use this video to practice a couple of editing effects a couple of special effects and also just to uh, try to test out some stuff with my workflow. The next thing I'll do with this camera is the A-B testing of, of having two cameras and see, you know, can I do natural cuts with this camera? But overall, for the price, this is really hard to beat, I think. Um, and I want to really thank uh, Lizzie for sending this camera out to me. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below, and I'll answer them. Until then, I'll see you next time.